Hey guys, Sean Bean. Today, I want to give you guys a quick timbering guide for Honkai Star Rail. This will apply for any team that you will ever build. There'll be three main things you have to put into consideration when you build a team, and there'll be a fourth advanced tip at the very end. Ooh, yeah. First, we will have the elemental system in this game, and this game doesn't use an elemental reaction, which means you cannot beat fire with ice, but you are beating fire with fire. By that, I mean you need the right element to break the enemy toughness bar, to do absolutely amazing damage, to stop their channeling skill, and even a support character can do amazing damage if you manage to break the enemy toughness bar. So when you build your character, it is very important to have one in each element so that you will always have the element that you need. Lucky for us, the game actually gives you everything that you need except for imaginary for now. But for every single element here, there's going to be that one free to play character for you to use. And look at that, you can clear the early and mid game with completely free to play characters. I built Clara for fun, but you don't need to summon a single ticket to pass the early and mid game. You get all the elements that you need from free to play characters and that's all you will ever need for the early and mid game. But if you want to build the five star that you pull from the gacha, absolutely awesome because this is a gacha game. You can build whatever you have fun with. Ooh, yeah. So you have done step one. Good job. Now moving on to step two, you need to have different roles in your team. You can't be using all hunt character and expect to do well in this game. This is a turn-based game. You can't dodge damage. They will attack you. They will destroy you and you will die. You will need to have tank and proper healer. So those two will be the most important role in every team is to have a tank and a healer. Of course, I think later into the game, you will be able to build more damage focused team to one shot a boss to clear wave fast. But for the early game, you will need to build a well balanced team. So if you look at the holy free to play beginner team, we have a tank, a damage dealer, a healer, and a utility character. This slot can be more versatile. You can put in a buffer, a debuffer, another damage dealer. You can put in anything here, especially the things that you like from the gacha. The damage slot can also be very versatile because you don't need win damage all the time. You can put in lightning, quantum, imaginary, physical, doesn't matter. But in my opinion, the other two slots on the side, first one being the healer is going to be a staple unit in your team. So you have to build Natasha, please. Best healer in the game right now. Better than the five star. Here, I said it. Way better because she can cleanse a target. And cleansing in turn-based game is the most important thing, okay? The boss will put debuff on you. They will stun your ass. They will make your unit hit your team. That is a debuff too. But she can cleanse that away. And that is awesome. So she will stay on almost every team I build because you can auto play in this game to farm dungeon for you. And when you auto play, you want to have the peace of mind. So having a healer here is very important. Next up, we have the Fire MC, also one of the best tank in the game right now, arguably better than Japar. Okay, I like the Fire MC a lot. And the Fire MC will provide AoE ton, which means the damage will go to her and she's very tanky. She provides protection shield for your team. So she is also a staple. The other two in the middle will probably change depending on the enemy I'm fighting. But I also have a very cool team, which is this one. Using Clara and March. Clara can revenge when she get attacked. March can revenge when her ally get attacked. So it's a lot of revenging without the need for any skill point. I can still do massive damage on the enemy and Dang Heng can use all the skill points he need, which will bring me to the third point, which is going to be the skill point management. Ooh, yeah. In this game, there's no cooldown system. Like every other turn-based game, there's going to be cooldown for your skill. But in this game, there is no cooldown. There's going to be skill point economy, skill point system that you have to spend to use your skill. When you use a default attack, the basic attack, you will gain skill point. When you use the skill, you will lose skill point. There'll be unit that doesn't need to use skill like Natasha. She doesn't need to use skill every turn. March doesn't need to use skill every turn. She can, but she doesn't have to. And there'll be unit like Dong Hang, the damage dealer, which kind of need to use his skill every single turn because you will do way more damage than using the basic attack. So he needs to use his skill 
all the time he will suck up all the skill points that you have away from your support character your tank character so you will need to have a balanced team in order to achieve a good skill point economy this might sound a little bit too complicated but if you have a balanced team with healer and tank they will not need to use their skill all the time because you don't have to heal every turn you don't have to shield every turn but you have to do some sort of damage every turn so danheng or your zealer or shu shang will do amazing damage with their skill every single turn with their spending the skill point away while the other character will be generating skill point that's why i really love this team <laughs> this team is absolutely incredible so danheng will be sucking all the skill point away and i need to generate skill point for him so Natasha will be doing that. I can shield Clara. Clara is going to be built very, very slow. And her main damage output will be from the revenge of Natasha and March. Wait, no. So the main damage will come from Clara and March revenge. They will occasionally use their skill, but they don't have to. And Danheng can use all the skill that he wants. And my team will still be dishing out some amazing damage. And thanks to the shield, I don't take a whole lot of damage. And Natasha won't be healing anytime soon as well. So that is really awesome. I can keep shielding Clara. Clara will once in a while use this to do even more damage. And Danheng can use his skill all the time. If you put in four damage dealer into the same team, they will all be using their skill point like crazy. And you will be stuck with using basic attack on one of your strong damage dealer and not do any real damage at all because you don't have any skill point. So whatever team you are building, make sure to have a balanced team between support, healer, and damage dealer. That way, you will have a skill point like no tomorrow. You don't have to worry too much about it. Ooh, yeah. And the last thing I need to tell you guys about is going to be speed tuning, which is very important in all the turn-based game I've played before. But in this one, not so much. But it will be cool to do in the future because you can set up a team to one-shot a boss if you take care of your speed tuning right. The turn order of the character will be determined by their speed stat. As you can see, all the battle happened with Dang Heng moving first because he had high speed. Because right now, I have a speed boot on the character. So he has the highest speed on my team. He'll take the first turn and he will take more turn naturally because his high speed allow him to gain that turn back very, very quickly. So in an endgame team, you will have Bronya or Tengen to buff the damage of the damage dealer. Next up, you will have Pella to do defense break or defense shred on the enemy with her ultimate skill or with the light cone. This four star light cone in the end game will, in my opinion, be one of the most important light cone to have because it will allow the character in the Nalai Nahai Nihility because it will allow the user to break the enemy defense, allowing more damage output. So after Bronya buffed the damage output of the damage dealer, we have Pella applying the defense break on enemy boss. And then we'll have our damage dealer to go absolutely crazy doing that one hit, 100,000 damage hit on the boss with Zila or Yang King or Shu Shang or Dan Hang. They will be doing some insane damage with the perfect buff into debuff condition. And that will only happen with good speed tuning. So when you build your character in the future, make sure your damage dealer to be the last to move in the team so that they will achieve all the perfect condition to do the biggest damage possible. And I also highly recommend for you to have the support character, for example, Natasha or Asta to have higher speed. You want to look for the speed in the boot, okay? Very, very important. You want to look for the speed stat in the boot so that they can be moving more often, generating more skill point with their basic attack. If they move often, they can give more skill point to Dan Hang, who will be using skill point every single turn. So putting all that aside, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope that was not too much information. This will be the team, or this was the team that I use for all the story content, all the Forgotten Hall, all the simulated universe. I was using this, just putting in and out servo to destroy almost everything. And that's it for me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.